The importance of exports to the U.S. beef industry is clear, and the staff and leadership of the U.S. Meat Export Federation helped to ensure demand for U.S. beef all around the globe. Joining us now to talk about these efforts is Dan Hallstrom, President and CEO of the U.S. Meat Export Federation. Dan, let's talk about this record year we've had. It's been phenomenal for beef exports. What's been driving that? Well, yeah, we're going to come in at a record, almost 12 billion in sales once we get next week's data for December. Uh, but the real key is it's been broad-based growth across quite a few different markets. We're going to have three markets that'll be 2 billion plus in Korea, Japan, China. But then you've got a lot of other markets, uh, emerging regions that are also contributing to that. So I think that's really one of the keys is this diversified approach, uh, not relying on any one market is really encouraging as we go forward. So let's talk 2023. I mean, can we expect the same kind of growth this next year? Well, I didn't think we'd have it this year, to be quite honest. Uh, a lot of headwinds. Yeah. And, uh, but, but demand, honestly, I've been in this business quite a few years. Demand is as strong as I've seen it. Mm. So I think it bodes well going into 2023. Uh, you know, our forecast is steady to maybe down slightly for the year, uh, but this broad base uh, trend line uh, should continue. And uh, there's a lot of emerging trends that we've seen from the last year that will continue. One being the online retail e-commerce uh, aspect, which is just literally booming. Um, the other thing to keep in mind too, as we go into 2023, is that the records in 2022 were set without food service really playing a major role uh, because of COVID. COVID. COVID's a thing of the past in the U.S., but it was a very much front and center in 2022 mm -hmm. throughout most of Asia. Mm -hmm. So now that we've got that finally behind us, this mm -hmm. could prov provide some tailwinds in 2023. That's outstanding news. You know, the last time we talked, we discussed some of the transportation and shipping issues that were really causing some problems with exports. Do you expect those to continue? Well, um, I expect that situation to improve, but it's not solved. We don't have the backups of ships off the West Coast. Uh, Randy Block referred to that during the meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but we still don't have that reliability that we had pre-COVID. So I think, uh, I'm hoping that we see some improvement there. Granted, it's much better than it was, but it's still not ideal. You mentioned three $2 billion markets, uh, but you also mentioned the importance of diversification. What are some of the other markets that you think offer some real growth potential for the U.S. beef? Well, uh, we're already seeing it in some of these markets. Uh, you take a market like Colombia. Uh, Colombia wasn't even on the radar, you know, five, six years ago. Uh, we're going to be $70, $80 million market uh, in 2022. You've got Indonesia emerging. You've got the Philippines, Vietnam, uh, uh, places like uh, Chile. Uh, we actually opened an office in Chile last year because it's becoming such a mainstay. Um, and then, of course, I, I mention this every time, but at the African market, Egypt, Morocco, you know, Angola, Nigeria, uh, these are some of the markets of the future. So you kind of add it all together. There's a lot going on and most of it's uh, pretty positive. Tell our viewers just a little bit about some of the strategies you and your staff employ to drive beef demand in these markets. Well, the, the main thing we do is education, telling the story, telling the U.S. production agriculture beef story, but telling it the right way. We have plenty of uh, competitors out there that try to tell our story for us. And uh, granted, uh, it's not exactly the version that we want. So sitting down with a trade and the trade's customers, be it in Japan, be it in Mexico, be it in uh, you know, Taiwan, um, this is what we do on a daily basis. And and uh, uh, the other thing that we focus on is product mix, mm. selling the whole carcass. And uh, that $12 billion I mentioned, 1.3 billion of it will be variety meats. Mm. You know, tripe, hearts, tongues, livers, um, which is the center of the plate item for a lot of these countries. So selling the whole carcass is another message we focus on every day. So no doubt carcass utilization is uh, one key element of this growth in demand. Another one, I'm always intrigued by the tasting demonstrations that you all do to give people an opportunity to experience the quality difference of U.S. beef. Tell us about that. Well, exactly. I mean, most of our competition around the world, we're not comparing apples to apples in terms of quality. So uh, 
we can tell them about it and we do, we walk them through it. But really what seals the deal is getting that, that beef into their mouth mm -hmm. so they can taste it for themselves. Because, uh, you know, uh, you know I, I make this comparison a lot that one of our largest competitors globally is Indian buffalo meat. And, you know, it's pretty easy to tell the difference when you taste U.S. beef. Uh, that tells the whole story right there. Well, thank you very much, Dan, for those insights and more importantly, for all you do for the U.S. beef industry. We appreciate that. Well, thank you very much. My pleasure. Now, to learn more about the work of the U.S. Meat Export Federation and its efforts to enhance U.S. beef demand overseas, just visit their website at usmef.org.